Hi friends, uh, we're back, yes, it's Ernie Rex again with our five day stop smoking plan and uh, today we're in our fourth presentation which in actual fact if we were doing this in town with a group of people this would be our fourth night which normally is Thursday evening uh, when we normally start on the Monday. So welcome to you that's been with us from the beginning and uh, welcome as well to everyone that's joining us now for the first time. You can go back to the first presentation and start with it and join us as we, as we start this one as well. Today, our fourth presentation, how do you feel? How do you feel? You can also stop this habit. And most of you, well, that's my experience in town when I do these presentations, most of the group uh, at this stage have now stopped this habit. So you actually should feel much better than yesterday. Yesterday was a very difficult day, uh, the day uh, where everybody was uh, battling with, with these uh, withdrawal symptoms, but today should be a day where you feel a little bit better. Tomorrow, everything will be sunshine. Uh, that I can assure you. Just bear with us and stay with us. For those who have stopped on Monday, day one, the worst is really over. You might not believe it, but it's actually a fact. And this is what happened, and yeah, you know, don't ask. <laughs> don't ask how it happened, but that is what happened. Now, somebody might still be struggling. Yes, uh, it might be. There is one way. Uh, you say you want to put on weight and you're, you're uh, uh, scared you're going to put on weight now because you're eating too much now. That's the normal thing. They tell me at this stage, now we're eating and eating, we're not smoking anymore, but we're eating. Well, there's one way in which you can go and weigh yourself. But let's talk about our diet. Let's talk about our diet a little bit tonight. Uh, this is, I won't say this is the perfect diet. That's not the one. It's just a diet. It might be a good one. Uh, 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 the portion of it, I'm looking at, at, at what... Uh, is in it uh, that the, the most of what we eat should be in this bottom part of, of, of this triangle um, and, and the least should be on top so all the sugars should be uh, the least of our diet and, and, and uh, the grains etc should be the most of our diet and then uh, when you look at the at the second part there from the bottom you see the the, the fruit and you see the vegetables and that is not really part of a, a smoker's diet I know it because uh, I smoked for 42 years that's not something which a smoker is used to eating and I, I get that at every situation where we do this uh, the smokers just tell me oh, no no not really uh, raw vegetables <laughs> Not really. Uh, fruit on a daily basis, two, three portions, uh, not really. Well, I read a book the other day which interested me. Uh, it was a book of a, written by a, a medical doctor. And he said something interesting, which I would like to share with you. He said when, 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 when God made the earth, he made it 70% water and 30% mass. And then when he made man, he made man 70% water and 30% mass. Now what would the food be? It's the question he's asking. What would the food be that man 
should actually be eating in most quantities. And then he says it should actually be that food that has 70% water and 30% mass. And which on this diagram would that be? Well, that would be the vegetables and the fruits. Think about it. No, you say, oh, it's not, this, this, this is not nice. It's not really nice. Well, have a, have a quick look at it, look at it again. It, it's not that bad. It doesn't look that bad to me. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, it on the market today. Uh, you can, in, in, in season, there's so much you can do with it. There's so much you can eat. And, and it also builds up your immune system. All of this is building your immune system every day. All the fruit you're taking into your body. And that's how we build our bodies. That's how we build our immune systems against viruses and whatever uh, that uh, might attack us. You know the, the, the eight health laws? Do we know it? Well... Let's look at them. Let's look at the L. The one is nutrition. You need to get the right nutrition to stay or to be healthy. Uh, if you don't eat the right foods, you won't be healthy. The second one is exercise. If you sit in a chair the whole day, you will not be healthy. In the end, you will become sick. You need exercise. You need water. We've, talking, we've talked about that a lot now. You need water on a daily basis, six to eight glasses a day. You need sun, sunshine. You need sunlight. Uh, you must get into the sun for vitamin D to stay healthy. Temperance, well, that speaks for itself, isn't it? You, everything should be used and, and, and done uh, with temperance. And then air, oxygen, you, you need air. You, you should go out into the open and, and breathe and, and, and take the oxygen into your lungs and breathe it out and take it into your lungs. Normally I have a, a medical staff, a sister or somebody with me in my presentations and then she shows us how, how you should stand up and, and how you should take and, and, and take the, the, the oxygen in through your nose and, and keep it there and, and keep it there for uh, at least 10 uh, uh, counts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then, and then let it out through your mouth. And, and do that 3, 4, 5 times. And well, if you're a smoker you, and you do it the first time, you'll see you're quite dizzy because you, your, your lungs are not uh, I'm not used to that much oxygen, so we need air. These, we're busy with the health, health laws now. Rest. You cannot go on and on and on and on. You need rest. Even God said that we need rest. We need one day in the week, we need rest. And even He rested. He rested on the seventh day after uh, He made man. And then the last thing is trust in God. Um, if you're a, a believer, which I hope you are, uh, that's one thing uh, that we've got. When uh, we've got that will, but we haven't got the power, we can go to God. And that is the new start, the new start of eight health laws and uh, I hope you will uh, think about this today and, and, and make sure that every one of these which I've stated here is now part of your new life your life free 
from cigarettes. That's my wish for you. Sleep. Sleep. Get regular hours of sleep. And preferably be in bed by 10 o'clock in the evening. By before midnight at 10 o'clock you should actually be in bed. The dangers of smoking. There's not a single part of our body that's not affected by this habit. Not a single part. Even our teeth. Yeah, even our teeth. And I'm just going to show this quickly. This comes from a dentist that gave it to me. Uh, this is uh, what's the problem. Even mouth cancer. Eh? And this is now this is not going to be very, be very nice, but uh, a glimpse. You should just have a glimpse and see what what can happen to you through this smoking habit. Mouth cancer. It's not nice to have a look at that. I'm going to let you look at a few videos. Uh, I did not want to play this on Monday evening or on the first day at the first presentation. But I think uh, you can take it now because you've stopped, eh? You've stopped. So let's just have a look at it again. Lungs are like sponges designed to soak up air. But some people use their lungs to soak up cigarette smoke. If you could wring out the cancer-producing tar that goes into the lungs of a pack-a-day smoker every year, this is how much you'd get. It's enough to make you sick. Very sick. No, I can't go more than a few hours without a cigarette. I can't go more than a few feet without the oxygen tank. I tried to quit and I put on three kilos. I've lost 14 kilos. You've got to die of something. You've got to keep your hopes up. Nah, I don't think I can quit. I don't think I can operate. Yes. Uh, can you believe it? This mouth also said, and some of our smokers will relate to that. Who wants to die with healthy lungs? Yes, that's what that's what I said. As that, as that lady, you've got to die of something, isn't it? You've got to die of something. And then the guy that says, no, I don't think I can quit. And then the doctor says, I think I cannot operate anymore. It's too late. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every time you inhale, tobacco smoke condenses in your lungs to form tar. This is a healthy lung. And this is the amount of tar a pack-a-day smoker breathes in every year. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Smoking creates blood clots which can cause strokes. Some strokes kill, blind, or paralyze. Others you don't even know you're having. This is the result of a minor stroke in a smoker, aged 38. Every cigarette is do Every cigarette is doing you damage. Lungs are like sponges with millions of tiny air sacs for transferring oxygen. Every breath of tobacco smoke attacks them. No wonder smokers feel short of breath. Their lungs are rotten. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. 
chemicals from tobacco smoke get into your bloodstream and can damage the delicate blood vessels inside your eye. We now know that smoking is a major cause of irreversible blindness. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. This is part of an aorta, the main artery from the heart. Smoking makes arterials sticky and collect dangerous fatty deposits. This much was found stuck to the aorta wall of a smoker, H32. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Every cigarette is doing you damage. New research shows how tobacco smoke attacks a vital gene which protects lung cells from cancer. One damaged cell is all it takes to start lung cancer growing. Every cigarette is doing... Yes. New roads need to be formed. New habits need to be pursued. So that you can be free. Free as a bird. What a wonderful feeling. Look at the rise in lung cancer. The chart showing us that since 1960 something happened to women. Women did not get any, well they got lung cancer but not to such an extent that men got it. Why? Because men smoked. Women did not smoke in those years. When I was a young child, women never smoked. And then all of a sudden, 1960, they started to smoke because of the advertisements. I'll show you now. And that's what happened to them. Now they are at the same risk for lung cancer than men are. We showed you the decline in the heart attack after uh, smoking cessation uh, and the decline in lung cancer which is positive grafts which you should look at because the body has a wonderful ability to heal itself if you give it time now I would like just to talk to our our ladies our women if at all you are still in a position where you can conceive a child, please, please listen. Please. What do you want to pass on to your child? How will you shape her future? Smoking. Your choice, not theirs. Would you give a cigarette to your unborn child? You do. Every time you smoke while you're pregnant. Pregnant mothers, please. Don't smoke. Call 453. Now, could that be possible, eh? Is that possible? Is that how you would like him to look? Or is this how he should be looking? When my ch children, children were young, aged four and two, I put them into a station wagon. And I drove with them from here in Joburg. I drove down to Durban on a regular base yearly. Two boys lying at the back of that station wagon on a mattress and me, their father, smoking, chain smoking from here to Durban, just throwing out the one cigarette 
after the other when it's finished. Nobody has the right to do that to a child. Now this is actually a, a, a clip which is not really a nice clip but there's a luckily there's a, a happy ending. A tourist attraction in its native Indonesia for all the wrong reasons. This toddler on the island of Sumatra, famous for his nicotine addiction. <laughs> Aldi Rizal started smoking when he was just 18 months old. Now he's hooked and on 40 a day. And don't think of denying him his fix. The toddler goes crazy, screaming, slamming his head on the floor, even getting sick if he doesn't get his two packs a day. His father, Mohammed, who introduced him to smoking, has to find the equivalent of five dollars a day to pay for the fags. He insists that his son is healthy. Luckily, Aldi is now in rehab under Indonesia's National Commission Child Protection Supervision. Yeah, can you believe it? Two years old and nearly a chain smoker. But luckily there's a there's a nice ending to this one. When Artie Rizal was one and a half, this baby was given his first cigarette and became addicted. The disturbing images of him from a poor village in Indonesia puffing away 40 times a day were seen around the world in 2010. At five, Artie's parents started weaning him off cigarettes, but his addiction quickly turned to food, and his weight, 52 pounds, became too high, 13 pounds more than the average weight of a child that age. Doctors stepped in to help put Artie on a healthier diet and exercise routine. He was also given activities to do where he can just be a kid. Now nine, Artie's in the fourth grade and one of the top students in his class. He's no longer smoking or overeating, but rather focusing his attention on excelling in the classroom. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Lee Sheps. Yes. Yes, can you believe it? Advertisements. What do you think is spent on advertisements per year to sell this product? Now, normally, if I, when I ask this question, the people say millions of dollars, millions of dollars, billions of dollars. Well, this is what is spent on adver advertisements, just to advertise the cigarettes. Now, this is 1,8 trillion dollars. So you need to add another 15 noughts to get to rand, our rand, just to put that in perspective. My question is if they've got that type of money to spend on advertisements, what do they earn? What in the end do they really earn? And this is how it looked like in the olden days. Considering all I heard, I decided to either quit or to smoke through. And now I've decided, no, not to quit, but to smoke through. It's like the lady, you bring her a book and you show her all these terrible pictures of, of mouth cancer and, and your lungs and whatever, and, in the hope that she will stop this habit and then you come back to it and you say okay are you going to stop smoking now and then she tells you no I'm going to stop reading I now smoke through start fresh with Bel Air you remember those menthol cigarettes nice and cool in your throat start fresh in the morning with Bel Air and that's what this one says Pull more, gold. You make out better at both ends. 
best selling filter, low in tar. Crave an A, even always cool, fresh and kind to my throat. Always cool, fresh and kind to my throat. Until your throat gets cancer, then it's not so cool and fresh and kind anymore. Camels, precious camels. Why? Why so precious? Because doctors advised you that if you want to smoke, that's the cigarette you should smoke. That's in my days when I grew up. And that's why it's also an expensive cigarette. It's not cheap. Camels, precious camels. And uh, most of us that younger won't remember these, but this was on our TVs when TV started. Yeah, camel, camel. And then Marlboro, Marlboro, eh? the cowboy cigarette. The cowboy cigarette. Now I've got another uh, clip. Uh, oh, it's actually a film, but uh, it's too long uh, to show you. Uh, the film's name is uh, I, I Miss My Lung, Bob. This guy, his one lung has already been removed because of the smoking habit now now he's only got the one lung but he's still a cowboy he's, he's, he's on his horse and on this side he's got his uh, his uh, uh, oxygen tank and then he's he puts his oxygen into his nose and then he breathes in the oxygen from this side of the horse but on this side of his saddle there's his carton of Marlboros Marlboros. And then he takes out the Marlboro and he smokes the Marlboro and when he's finished with the smoke then he takes his oxygen again. He's still a cowboy. I miss my lung, Bob. Marlboros. <laughs> Heading for the high country. A new snow and good hunting up there. Up in Marlboro country. to where the flavor is. Famous Marlboro Red or new Marlboro 100s, the Longhorns. Come to Marlboro Country. Yeah, yeah, and then <laughs> who remembers this one? The guys normally laugh when I show this one. Do you remember this one? Lexington, from Riggio Tobacco Corporation of New York, alive with flavor. For an honest-to-goodness American blend that's alive with real flavor, friend, you can't smoke better than number one, so man, relax with a Lexington. Lexington, that's the one. For after-action satisfaction, blended here for rich, real tobacco flavor, Lexington has got it all. Lexington. That's the one. Ah, who can say no, eh? To that one. Who can say no? That's why I can't, I couldn't show you this one on Monday. <laughs> that wouldn't have worked, but I can show it to you now. Yeah, Lexington. And then this one. You remember this one? Gunston toasted are made from the best tobaccos a man can get. The finest.
finest broadleaf Virginia for that rich, rewarding, toasted taste. For quality and flavor, filter or straight, more and more men rate Gunston great. Get closer to flavor with Gunston Toasted. Yeah, yeah, very persuasive, eh? And then you don't know that smoke, tobacco smoke, is responsible for 80 to 90 percent of all lung tumors. Uh, that's something to think about, eh? Now, my friend, you've stopped because you made the decision. Nobody else. You made it. The program works if you follow it. But what about six weeks or a year from now? Well, it was a decision made by me on reliable information for the rest of my life, for my health and that of my family, and because I decided to choose not to smoke. Nobody, nobody has ever been sorry because she or he stopped to smoke. This is not a nice sight. I've seen that many times in my life in hospitals and it's not it's not nice. Nobody has ever been sorry. A new philosophy, that's what we need. Many people's philosophy, let's eat and drink, tomorrow we're dead. And I also had that philosophy for many years in my life. For nearly 60 years I had that philosophy. Let's eat and drink. Tomorrow we are dead. But we need something else. We need something else. But that I'll talk to you about tomorrow when we conclude our presentation. Remember, six to eight glasses of water per day. Get enough sleep. Do something else. Shift your focus. Eat healthy. Wait for five minutes. Avoid stress. Do light exercises, think positive, and have a very, very lovely day for the rest of the day. Good day, and we will be seeing each other for the last time with our next presentation, which will conclude the five-day stop smoking plan. It's only Rex. Uh, saying good night, or good evening, or good day. God bless you. Until we talk again.